Now, the basic hook I'm using is a barbless grub shape hook. This is a size 12. Now, the first thing we've got to do uh, is to basically weight the body of the fly. But add weight. You can add it in a couple of ways. I'm using, this is a lead foil that you can buy. It's uh, Some use the, the lead foil that is added to a golf club to obviously change the uh, well, I'm not sure exactly what it's to do, but it's to basically help the club head to hit the ball better. But anyway, this is the use for uh, weighting the fly. Now, if it's some of them can be quite thick, you can roll them flat. It's very easy to the edge of your table. Just to roll it on the side against the, the lead, which will thin it out. If you feel it's too thick, and if especially if you want to tie smaller flies. Now. Use a large pair of scissors, these are just dressmaker scissors that I've got. And basically what I'm going to do, looking at the white side, this is a sticky back so it's white sided. Don't cut it with the silver, the same colour as the blade. Because it's quite hard to actually see, so use the white side at the back as a guide. And then you're looking for around about a mil, millimetre width strip. Nice long straight cuts, follow the tips of the scissors, don't follow the cutting edge. Use the tip of the scissors as a guide, because that's where it's going to go. Obviously, I've been sticky back, the back comes away, usually when you're cutting it off. It's very easy then to so I put it onto the, the hook itself. Obviously, thinking of the shape of the fly, you're looking for that. Start at the back in this case. Once you've got a turn, you can actually break away the excess or the wee tail that you hold. And what I do is wind it up. Now I'm going to come back down around about 3 mil or so from the head because I want the, to taper towards the eye. Come halfway back down. Now that's plenty. Now you could go back up to steep it, make a wee bit heavier. But I find that that is fine. Now then I use the back of my nail just to flatten down the, the waist end or the cut end. And obviously keep that for your next fly. I usually just stick it to the side of my desk. That's basically how to the lead the body of your hook. Now thread choice, basically the, the thread choice is to go with the colour of the, the fly that I'm tying. In this case, I'm using the pink thread from Uni in 8 -0. First thing I've got to do is oh, wax the thread. Just run it through the once and then run your fingers through. And basically, the as you heard that, it was a bit squeaky. What I do is take this off. And these two ends, I rub these inside of my nose. So, gives a wee bit of oil, as you want to call it. So that doesn't it, it takes away the squeaky bit, you see. And it makes it run much smoother. You end up with a dirty nose like, but anyway, it's, uh, it makes the thread come from the bobbin much easier. Now the first thing we've got to do is start the thread at the eye. I'm just going to use the base piece, keep it quite tight so I can control the turns. Just a bit better. I usually like to take the thread down to this point here. Trim away the, the excess waste. And then come back up because I'm going to tie in the eyes. Now in the original Caddis pupa I used a, a yellow, a bright yellow eye. In this case, which was just an island, a heavy nylon. This is a, an orange nylon which I'm using in the pink one. And you can see it's like a fibre optic that catches the light. This is what makes it a good eye and a good aiming point. Now, it's quite simple to make the eyes. Now, the, this is a, a 30 pound nylon, it's quite thick. The original one was only like a 20. So you, you basically, because it's a heavier nylon, you don't need as much to make the eyes. So what you do is, this, this is a pair of tweezers, which I've obviously ground down into a point. Depending on how big the fly is and wide the eyes are, the further you go down, the bigger the fly. In this case, size 12, it's close to the tip, it's good enough. And then we trim it the same length either side, if you can see this. Just make sure it's level. Obviously, don't let it go because it's a bit of tweezers. And then we simply melt the ends in to the side of the tweezers itself, do the same on the other side, form the small dumbbell eyes as you can see, ideal. 
put the eyes on. I usually keep it in the, the tweezers, come round, catch the, the, this, the eye needs to be with a couple of turns and let go. Now, it's far easier than trying to grab a tiny bit, a tiny dumbbell eye. And then once we get it in position, you can see it's a bit off slightly. So we position it, just move it around to get it to sit evenly either side. You want to figure it through it. Try and bring it on top. So just, you've got to move it around to get it to sit. That looks a bit better. Now, now you're looking just about, say, half a mile or so from the eye. Then we just, once we're happy with the position of the, the eyes, we can then figure it through nice and tight. And we start to work towards the back. Now, I usually come to the point of the hook at this point. Now, this is a darning uh, wheel. It's a, if you want to know you could call this, it's basically like a, a, a peach or a light pink. Now, this is the old cards. This is a Chadwick's wheel. Uh, I bought lots of these on one eBay. It cost me 10p, 20p. Uh, you can buy all these different colours. Now, I, I really like this light colour. It's a colour you would see in nature, and uh, especially in a grub light, and in some of the caddis, it's a, it's a great colour. Obviously greys, uh, the yellows, olives, and so on. But this is a good colour. This is 219 as they would call it. But you can actually get a nice peach coloured dye. And the darning yarns being, uh, and if you look at the percentage there, the wool is 85%, the nylon's 15 so it takes the colour really well. So when it dies, it's very easy. So what I then do is transfer the yarn onto an old spool so I can use it. So basically, just going to tidy up the end. You catch this at the top, and then wind it to the back to where I want the body to start. So I come round to the back here, come up three or four turns. So I'm making sure there's no loose turns to that point. Because uh, I want to catch in, I'm just going to use the, the scud back, in this case brown, it's there, this one here, the uh, hairline, it's one I use for the, the, main, the, the main pupa, the McPhail pupa, in the yellow, uh, it's a great, it's thin, it shows up really well, and I found it to work, and it's perfect. So, quite a length, cut off. Now what we want to do is get our scud back, we want to cut it into a point, so basically like a pencil point, so that we can catch it in. It's very easy, we just catch it at the top here, the point, because it's tapered, it's easy to catch. So we make sure it's secure, and then we lightly stretch it out and work towards the back. Now don't start stretching it too much until we make sure it's it's tied in. When you're happy, then we can then take up the thread to the point where the body's coming to, which will be in line with the point of the hook. So when we let the thread go, it should be in line with the point. Then what I like to do is to remove the thread to form the body. So do that away. Body's reasonably easy. It's a bit fiddly at first. But once you start to tie two or three, you get into a, a kind of rhythm. So first thing I do is do a turn at the back and below the scud back. And then I do a turn in front, bring the scud back over, just take my fingers out of the way, nice and straight, stretch it out, do a turn, do another turn in front, and then we do a turn in front again, and we just keep going, do another one, Depending on the size of the fly, do another turn. Now, it'll look like it's getting thicker because of the taper. And then we do two turns, do another turn, as we work up. Now, I'm just making sure, before I go any further, I'm happy with the body. It looks not too bad. And do another two turns, and another turn, and that should be fine. We just hold it with one turn, take it back. I usually take a couple of turns up and then keep on hold of this. Put my thread back on, it's the same thread, pink uni. 
and come up over the top, making sure this is tied in. So I've got the waist piece, I've got the wool, or the yarn, I can trim that away. And then I take the thread to right up and top, and touching the scud back. I want to be a wee bit closer to the point of the hook, so if I've came too far up at this point, you can easily go back or take it down a bit. Just keep stretching it towards the back. See where you are. That's fine. Now the legs. This is just a brown partridge feather. Uh, I've already used a tied one, so I'm using a. You could get three, three, only oh, about three, even four times. Four flies out the one feather, depending on the size. All I do is cut a V out. So we'll get right and the left. The legs. Just bring them together. Just allow them to come together. Put them down either side of the the body from the top. Just hold them. Just take your time and come round with a couple of turns. See where you are. It's going to show you this. There's your legs there. If you want them slightly further down. You can do that, just bring them down. And we're happy with the position of the legs when we're making them trim away. Wax on your thread, tying these cut ends. Now we're in line with the eyes, then we tie in some dubbing, but we wind the dubbing up. At times it's easier to do that than winding from this point here down because it'll keep slipping. But plus this will thicken up a wee bit. Now the dubbing I'm using, this is a a heavy dubbing, it's a adult seals fur, it's old stuff that I have. You could use SLF, you could use natural dub, brown dub, you could use whatever you have. Uh, you just use what fly tie materials you have in your your kit. And then as I say we just work our way up, stretching the dubbing out when we need to. Just working up to the meet the legs. So tight. Now to get back down, tiny bit more dubbing. Just to make sure I'm coming back through without seeing the thread. Right up against the eyes. Like that. Bring my thread in front of the eyes. And there we are. Now what I'm going to do here, connect some Velcro. I'm just going to bring some of the thorax, the dubbing, and the thorax down either side. Just pull it down either side. There we are. Now, this is to represent the card is bursting open. Just checking where we are at this point. See the, the shape? That looks okay. Let's pull it back out the way. Make sure we're well tied in. I put wax on my thread. I just pulled up the head a wee bit. I take away this small fibre. There's always one that you catch. Then I'm going to bring the scud back over the top. I'm going to stretch this out between the eyes. Catch it down. I'm doing a couple of turns at this point. Just a couple of turns. The one thing I want to do here is you see it's twisted, it's curled up slightly with the thread turn. We can stretch that out. So basically we're gonna just gonna take this out, use my nail, so that we get a nice shape without the curls, because this point is you can it's loosened off that the, those two turns, but then we can tighten up when we're happy. Two or three turns more. We can check to see how it's going to sit on the fly. Because we're going to tie it off at the back, so we'll check all this first before we start to tie any more in. That looks okay to me, gives an impression of the head. But what we have to do now is make sure this is gonna, not going to move. So three or four turns more. And we're tying some horns. Now you could use, uh, I like to use bronze mallard. Uh, this is a bronze mallard feather, the remains of one of the tip. You can see you get a nice brown colour there. So you can use the grey side as well, which I do use a lot. These are great fibres for dry flies. I'm going to use the brown though, the brown side. 
So what we do is we bring out two of the fibres to bring them away from the, the stem of the feather. You'll see the, the tips are lining up. Once they come 90 degrees from the stem, the tips will naturally line up. You can then tear away. And you tie these on the top. Obviously you're looking to see, make sure you can see these, the horns. You're looking round about, if I'm going to measure it, twice the body length. So the horns on top. Tie it in front of the eyes with a couple of turns. Come behind, catch them behind the eyes with a turn. Just to see how they're sitting. I'm just going to fold back the waist ends as well. Just bring back pull the scud back so it tightens up and comes between the eyes with a couple of turns. Now I'm going to show you this then it's there. Now I want the pink head, don't be shy with the pink head. Do another couple of turns, just ignore these things just now. I'm going to put some varnish onto my thread. A great way to whip finish is to varnish the thread, just put varnish on and then whip finish really tight, especially when you're doing it like this. Uh, once that sets, really to remove it, it takes a bit of moving. You can varnish the head area as well if you want. Now the first thing we do, once we trim away the thread, take the scud back forward, separate the waist ends of the bronze mallard, just be careful, there they are. You can then trim these away. There we are. You can trim the scud back. Now, you can, depending on how long you want the scud back to be, you can trim it to suit. If you want it tight, just up against, or just to the back of the head, you can trim it a wee bit better. Normally what I do is a straight cut in front of the eye. So use the eye as a guide. So a nice straight cut. Like that. And then you just flip it back. And there we are. You can curl the, the horns to suit. And there you go. And that's the, the McPhail Cadiz Pupa, but with the, the peach coloured, or the light coloured uh, yarn. Uh, if you come across it, try it. I mean, it's worth a go. Try these, I mean, they work really well. Uh, the fished, in combination with the other Cadiz Pupa, the yellow, and I've got the Sunburst one, which really works. And uh, it's a good style, an easy fly to tie. Once you get into it, obviously, I've taken my time to show you how to tie the fly. If you feel it's easier, just a tiny bit of varnish on the head area here. That will seal up and give you a nice head. And there we go. Once that dries, it's fine. And that's the, what we were the basically the peach coloured one. Uh, and as I say, it's a nice pattern. You tie it whatever colour you want. So I hope you enjoyed that. And if you enjoyed the videos, uh, please subscribe. And thank you for watching.